Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. This is Tracy Allen of the Digital Marketing Supply Blog Report, the DMS Blog Report. And I'm super excited because one of my favorite people, one of my favorite <laughs> viewers is here. She's always on and she's always, she's the one that keeps me doing this thing because she's like, hey, what happened? Are you still doing your show? I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get back to it. So I want to... Uh, Thank Miss Pam Hoffman of Everyday Spacer for being here. So let me do this. Hey, Pam. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. So I am um, going to let you introduce who you are and what Everyday Spacer is all about. And then we're going to go into, you know, how people can actually be profitable in the space arena. So first tell us who you are and what you do. Sounds great. So I'm Pam Hoppin. It's uh, I'm creating Everyday Spacer. I think that many people are very interested in space. They just think it's for rich guys or the government or something you can watch on TV. And I know that it's also for you. I've written over 120 articles about things you can do. Absolutely like easy to hard to and everything in between. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my thing. I am bringing space to you, to the public, to people, whoever wants to get involved in any aspect whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, what is it that people like the average business, uh, you know, because this platform is mainly helping small businesses and stuff. And so when you think of a small business, what kind of advantages are there to getting involved? with the future, with the, the space programs and stuff, how can that be incorporated? Well, if you think about it, space is really just raw materials. We're gonna need everything out there. I'm talking from cocktail waitresses to police officers to lawyers, help us. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really everything, it's just raw materials. A lot like in our, you know, a lot of cases we've seen, especially like in the United States, once upon a time, it was just land and resources. And what happened? People came and they got rich. They got rich in so many different ways. There are incredible riches waiting for us. And if you think about the earth too, it is a garden planet in this solar system. And my personal feeling is that we should keep it that way. That's what it's good at. And why the heck are we messing it up? <laughs> right. The thing to do is to figure out, you know, what am I doing now that will translate or extrapolate into this new environment. And we have some really great examples. So, you know, of course, people are familiar with flying. They've mm -hmm. gotten on an airplane and they've flown places and they've come home. Well, once upon a time, that was a lot like the space industry, the daring people. They went first and there was a lot of risk involved. And then the rich people paid to get on a plane, an airplane, and mm -hmm. it was still very risky, but it was a thrill. Hey, David, glad you could be here. Hey, and David. now almost everyone has an opportunity to pay, get on a plane. It's very safe. It's very comfortable. And they go where they're, you know, to their destination, they return home. And it was all possible because of this path. We can draw parallels between what you know happened with the airlines and flight and all you know where but if you look at that you can say to yourself well what was needed we we mm -hmm. have a perfect and beautiful example in front of us what was needed what did what happened to create this worldwide global airline industry it's mm -hmm. a full blown mature industry and what what did people need what do they want and we're going to have the same opportunities when it comes to traveling into space and more probably there'll be different things that are needed in this new environment mm -hmm. that weren't needed before so can you think of how you could fit in i mean there are trillions you you wrote a great uh, post about morgan stanley mm -hmm. the estimates that the global and i'm just reading it that yeah. the global space industry could generate revenue of more than one trillion dollars i've actually seen more yeah. higher numbers by 2040. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. I agree. But, you know, let me ask you this. 
So when you're saying this, you know, what's going to be needed out there? Will everyone need to leave the planet? Like, you know, now I've got this visual of the Jetsons. Okay. So you had Spacey Sprockets, you had um, the, the, you know, all of these things out in space. So the whole Jetsons thing, is that what we are possibly looking at? Or is it going to be where there's um, still things here on earth that we can do uh, to help the people that want to go out into space or that are, you know, tell, tell me a little more about that. Yeah, I think there's an incredible opportunity even here on Earth. I mean, you, you know, you think about the space industry and why are we spending so much money in space? We're not. We're not spending money on space. We're spending money on Earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about all the people, all the jobs. Until we have colonies on Mars, every single cent gets put back into people on Earth. The, the engineers you know, anybody involved with, with launches, anybody involved with the support of launches. And, and again, think of the airline industry, how much is, you know, around having a plane take off and land. Mm -hmm. It's not just the plane, it's the airports and the, the companies around the airports. If you've ever, you know, driven in an area that has an airport, it's all sorts of things. It's mm -hmm. not just the airport. Like we're right. close to LAX here in, in where I live. And if you go there, there is, you know, tons and tons of industry surrounding. The, I mean, there's, there's even restaurants and parking right. and some other places that I don't want to go, <laughs> but, but they, it attracts <laughs> new business. It attracts, you know, the kinds of things that support the airline industry, as well as the people who fly. So there is a lot involved. And like I was saying before, the earth is essentially a garden planet. You can't do what you do here on Mars. You can't do it on, on Mercury or Venus or anywhere else. You know, we have water in abundance and it has an ecosystem that is, you know, very comfortable for human beings and animals. And, you know, if you're a gardener and you, you're, you really want to stay on land, absolutely there's an opportunity for you to when we take our industry off world it's going to be a chance to bring the earth back and the earth is very resilient mm -hmm. it's it, I mean, we saw that with, with the shutdowns we saw how clear the sky got mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. things regenerated the earth is incredibly powerful and resilient mm -hmm. and if we take our our stuff out there <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance. And, and of course, people can stay and help it, help it come back. I don't know if you've seen, but they have um, accelerated coral growth by 40 times oh. by, by taking corals, splitting them up and growing them. And it's 40 times faster to regrow the coral reefs. I think that's amazing. And people are figuring that out. People are needed for that kind of thing, too. We've seen it you know, over and over again, once upon a time. We could not feed billions of people. And what happened? Okay. Farmers figured out how to do it. Okay. Okay. So now what's the advantage of the coral though? Uh, well, the coral reefs I know is of great concern to many environmentalists. And, you know, they've, they're talking about how it's dying off. Well, if you can figure out how to, you know, regrow it 40 times faster, I think that's a huge advantage. I don't know exactly where the coral reef fits into the ecosystem, uh, you know, I, I study space. <laughs> I bet somebody out there knows, though. Right. Um, Oceanography, huh? <laughs> yeah, it would be wonderful to hear back from people, you know, yeah. how what, what they know about that sort of thing. Anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with the, the Earth as a garden planet in our solar system. So let me ask you, what do you see the first planet? I mean, you know, people have always said Mars. But is that really what we're striving to go to first? What's the first planet that we're looking at mm. trying to get on and, and do stuff? I think Mars has some some major uh, issues to solve. I mean, <laughs> you know, between here and there, there's a lot of radiation. However, in orbit around Earth is a little bit more comfortable and the moon is a little bit more comfortable and it's close. Mars is only close, you know, as they orbit around every couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. like the best time to launch. And that's when you'll see little Mars Rover things, you know, mm -hmm. being built up and launched. So the moon, though, it's always around us. 
and it's about three days current with current technology to get from here to there. Mm -hmm. So I think the moon's going to be a great place to start setting up <laughs> new habitats. Really. I don't know that we'll ever like terraform it or anything. And right. we don't want to, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to having, you know, not as much um, resistance, air resistance. Mm -hmm. Like we have here, there's a lot to get through and, and gravity there's right. a big gravity well on the earth and the yeah. moon much yeah. less. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's some options right here in orbit and between here and the moon. I guess we'll see. <laughs> it, it, it'll be definitely be interesting. Um, so now as you think about, you know, businesses now, and so we're talking about the future. So how can people that are in business now kind of get aligned with what's coming for the future? I would watch for trends and I would think in terms of what did happen and we don't have just the airline industry. Of course, trains were the same way. They, you know, between here and across the country, there was, they laid tracks and what did they set up? They set up little places to stop and buy things. I, I was going to let you finish the thought. I was going to put that no, up there. Okay. I'm letting you finish your, your thought though. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely right, David. Uh, you know, Let, wait, ask, read that question. Let's see. My son, sure. go ahead. My son is always talking about asteroid excavating and mining minerals from the moon. There are untold riches right in the area, the moon, the, the asteroid belt, incredible, incredible, huge opportunities. And yeah, sometimes the technology can be a hurdle. I think that there are lots of really, really big brains out there. They're going to figure that out. One mm -hmm. of the things I like to do is talk to regular folks because, you know, we look at this thing, this thing we have, this little phone. I don't think too many people really know how it works. We really got to be careful that we don't leave people behind. Yeah. I think that, you know, the more I can excite people and get them, you know, take them where they are to wherever they think they want to go up to and including travel out there, travel to the moon, the Mars, space, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. I think the more, well, well, it's, it's more in support of, of things like NASA. The perception is that NASA gets about 20% of the, you know, the, the money from the government. Right. It is in fact less than a penny per dollar and they have to do all their wonderful programs on less than a penny per dollar from the, the it was a GDP. Uh -huh. I, and, the <laughs> and the, but the return on investment i mean that cell phone i showed you yeah that's because of all the different things that happened like when we went on out to space things were too big so they got into miniaturizing electronics and components and mm -hmm. i mean <laughs> there are incredible things that come out of the space program for tennis shoes and for boats and for you could pretty much mention just about anything Mm -hmm. And there is a trail back to the space program somehow. Right. And a lot of this technology is available. There's, there's a, NASA has these technology centers. So you have a chance to find out what the tech is and use it to help things along, to make things happen. <laughs> Nice. I love it. I love it, Tim. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and do this little thing here and switch us around like that and do that because <laughs> we're about to close out. Yeah, that I see that. Time is fast. It just flies when you're having fun and there's so much. Like I, I, I still have like a ton of questions running through my brain, especially like when it, when I think about children, you know, uh, it, real quick, what would you say um, children really need to focus on in school so that they can start understanding the, the space industry. Pay attention to what really, and I'll use the term turns you on. I mean, literally if it's exciting to you, for one thing, it won't matter how hard things get, you will overcome. You will mm -hmm. keep doing it. It will drive you. Mm -hmm. And if you like math and science and all that, great. If you like art though, check it out. NASA always has artists do work for them. I have tons of collectible items that are from NASA's art program. There are right. a lot of possibilities, a lot of ways. Again, we're going to need everything out there. We're going to yeah. need cocktail waitresses and they're going to have to deal with microgravity. What's fun for you? What, 
what gives you a thrill? What seems interesting? Even if you want to stay on earth, that's cool too. Mm -hmm. Lots of possibilities. Yeah, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here, Pam. <laughs> You're a land lover. Okay, that's cool. I'm a land lover. Yeah, let's see. Uh, also heard about a company. You know, I got to put my glasses on to see this. <laughs> I also heard about a company working to start cleaning up space junk. Ah, uh, yeah, that's needed. Around the earth, one piece at a time. Yeah. Yes. Very important. That's and you know what? That's resources. Yeah. There's all yeah. kinds of materials right there. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think the Chinese are actually doing something in that area, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that, you know, that all of us, you know, if, if, if no one can see it, with what's going on now, how we are so all connected. We Everybody's absolutely are. Connected. And if everyone could pull resources together, my God, this whole world would be just amazing. And then, you know, going out into space and being able to work together as a, as a whole planet. So yeah, it's, it's got wonderful cooperative aspects to it. Yeah. Yeah. So Pam, um, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, look for Everyday Spacer. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got Facebook pages. I can be reached at Pam at EverydaySpacer.com. I wrote a book. There's like on Amazon. Yeah. You're amazing. Itty Bitty Explore Space Now. 15 Simple Ways to Get Involved Yourself, including sending something to space for free. Mm -hmm. Nice. Chapter 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going to uh, go ahead and get us closed out here as I maneuver all my stuff over here on the side. But I thank you, Dave, for showing up and anyone else that showed up. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, we do this every Tuesday. I bring somebody on, and I'm so, so happy that Pam was able to join me today. She's been so supportive. So I just wanted to give her some love and let her share, because this is something that is more powerful than people are thinking about. Yep. And every time I run across something, I'm like, oh gosh, I think of Pam when I'm seeing something about the amount of money and the, and the, and the things that are good that are coming yep. out of being connected to this new technology. So I wanted to bring the expert in the house and share with you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. So I don't want you to go anywhere. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, and then tune in next week to see who I have on. All right. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>